John Lund as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the King's Necklace matter. Expense account item one, $134.70. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Miami. Waiting at the airport, as promised, was your Southern States Agency Manager, Marty Fenton. Over a cup of brew in the coffee shop, he briefed me on the assignment. Ever hear of King Rawlings, Johnny? King Rawlings? Financial tycoon, wasn't he? Retired some 15, 20 years ago? That's the lad. About a year ago, he wrote a policy in a quarter of a million dollar necklace that he owns. Which has suddenly turned up among the missing? Uh, not yet. Will you Mr. expect it to? Well, we got a letter from him day before yesterday. Claims somebody attempted to break into his safe. Thinks they were after the necklace. Well, I'm usually sent for after the crime's been committed. True, my lad, true. Oh, pass the sugar, will you please? Sure. So what am I doing here now? The policy's coming up for renewal, Johnny. And there have been nasty rumors circulating around about Rawlings' present financial condition. Afraid he's starting a build-up to put in a fraudulent claim? It's been done before. The boys in Hartford get pretty stuffy about that kind of skullduggery. Now, we want you to check around Los Banos and see what you come up with. Is that where the gentle sea breezes waft through the palm trees? 2,000 imported ones. Los Banos is Rawlings' own personal island off the coast of Cuba. He's lived there for 20 years, surrounded by his memories, his trees, and his collection. Of precious stones? Uh-uh. People. Oh, your plane's waiting, Johnny. I hired a little amphib to fly Let's you down. Let's not brush off the collection of people, Marty. Who am I to prejudice a stalwart investigator about to brave the dangers of Rawlings Isle? On your way, lad. May the blessings of Eastern indemnity follow you even unto the ends of Los Banos. After one and a half hours of white clouds and blue sky... The plane put down in an even bluer sea and taxied over to a landing dock on a picture book island. King Rawlings had collected palm trees, all right, but I didn't know about the people. From where I stood, there was nothing to be seen but the landing dock, a gravel path, and those trees. The path led through a seemingly deserted tangle of exotic flowers, sweet-scented vines, and the ever-present palm trees. It was like a tropical paradise, peaceful, serene, untouched by men. I just about decided that nobody on this island ever made use of this lush garden spot when I learned that I couldn't have been more wrong. Over here, please. Well, hello, wherever you are. Over here, in the clearing to your right. Hello, who are you? My name's Johnny Dollar. I am Nita Valdez, Mr. Dollar. Well, I'm glad to know you, Miss Valdez. You are the man who arrived on the plane a few minutes ago, no? I didn't think anyone had heard. The hospitality is overwhelming. You would become accustomed to it. Everyone here is too occupied with himself to bother concerning anyone else. Like me, I have been too busy sunbathing. Yes, uh, so I noticed. If it bothers you, you could hand me my robe. Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. You have come to see the king about the attempt to steal his necklace? Apparently sunbathing hasn't interfered with your learning about that. You obviously do not know King Rawlings very well. Why do you say that? Everyone on this island has been accused of attempting the theft. Including you? Why should I be an exception? Oh, just wondering. Because I'm young and beautiful, you think perhaps I hold some special place of esteem in King Rawlings' affections? Well, do you? Can you reach that bottle of suntan lotion? Yeah, sure. The back of my shoulders, would you mind? It is a difficult place for me to reach. Oh, I'll be glad to. About the necklace, Mr. Dollar, I would not be too concerned about it if I were you. Oh? Why not? Well, if anyone had actually made an attempt to steal it, the king knows who he is. But he's still accused everybody here, huh? 
It affords him a great deal of pleasure to make others squirm and be uncomfortable. You don't like him very much, do you? I hate him. And why do you stay here? Same reason as everyone else. Money. Oh, that will do nicely, thank you. You're welcome. Do you mind explaining that bit about money, Miss Valdez? Uh, later, perhaps. The sun is still warm and I wish to take advantage of it. We will meet again. A polite dismissal, if I ever heard one. You're wondering, perhaps, why I stopped you to talk this way? The thought had occurred to me, yes. When you meet the king, get to know him a little, I think you will understand why. And if I don't? I sunbathe here every day at this time. I'll think about that, too. I found that Rawlings, like all good kings, lived in a castle. This one, obviously imported, stone by stone, from some Moorish province. A nervous little man came to the main gate and escorted me inside to the baronial hall. Harley is my name, Mr. Dollar. Timothy B. Harley. I'm Mr. Rawlings' secretary. In here, please. Mr. Rawlings, steady. He'll be down to join you shortly. Thanks, Mr. Harley. I presume you're here about the uh, necklace, Mr. Dollar? A favorite topic of conversation around here, isn't it? I beg your pardon? The necklace. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, under the circumstances, you see, the attempted theft and all, it, uh... Has someone else mentioned it to you? Any reason why they shouldn't? Oh, and, oh no, 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 not at all, no. It was just that, well, um... Was it Nita Valdez, by any chance? What makes you think so? Oh, I, nothing. Oh, no, no, nothing at all. Only, you see, it was... Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I, I've suspected something for a long time. It's come to my attention. You talk too much, Harley. Oh, oh Mr. Rawling. Oh, I didn't hear you come in. I was just telling... Get out. Mr. Oh, well, of course, Mr. Rawling. Of course. You're from the insurance company? That's right. Johnny Dollar. Why you instead of Marty Fenton? He's an agent. I'm a special investigator. I didn't request an investigation. You made a report of an attempted robbery. What do you want me to do? Have you declare the policy void because I didn't? What do you want us to do? Thank you for letting us pay out a quarter of a million if the necklace turns up missing. Over here, darling. There's the safe I keep it in. Hmm. Pretty substantial job. Fenton supervised the installation himself. Those scratches near the combination, those what made you think somebody tried to force it? Only a hammer and chisel could make those marks. Mm hmm. I'd like to see the necklace. Of course. Who do you think was after it? Either Harley or my protege, Nita Valdez. Why well, suspect them? They love money and hate me. You care to go into that? You're investigating the necklace, Dollar, not my relationships with the people on this island. There it is. Oh. Beautiful workmanship. What else did you expect for a quarter of a million dollars? A little more than this, Rawlings. Hmm? I'm no expert on precious stones. But ten will get you twenty if these aren't paste. Let me see. Hmm. You're right, they are. Any explanations? None. You've no idea how the switch was pulled? I have not. When was the last time the necklace was appraised? When the policy was written. Who else has the combination of this safe? No one. Oh. Kind of puts you in a spot, doesn't it? Not at all. I'm insured. The law says we don't have to pay off on fraudulent claims. I know. The law also says you have to prove that fraud exists. I broke the news to Marty and looked around for something to improve the shining hours while waiting for him to arrive. I found it. Dressed in a clinging silk gown on a patio overlooking the sea. 
It was obviously the cocktail hour. Mind if I join you? Oh, please do. I can't make up my mind. To what, Mr. Donner? Which shows you off to greater advantage? That dress or the sunset? <laughs> For that, you may have a choice of rewards. Scotch or martini? Nothing, thanks. Well, what did you think of him? The king? Yes. I'm more interested in what you think of him. I have already told you. I know. He confirmed your statement. That I hate him? Mm-hmm. You can believe it. I do. What I want to know is why. King Rawlings is a collector. Stamps, butterflies, out-of-state license of plates? people, Mr. Dollar. How does this fascinating game of his work? He specializes in aspiring artists with little or no talent. An actress like myself, a would-be poet like Harley. He baits his trap with the promise of money to aid their careers, keeps them dangling as long as they can amuse him and feed his ego, then he casts them off. Very amusing. Yes, isn't it? Well, if you know what he is, why stay on? Oh, it's much easier to cling even to a remnant of a dream than to face the harshness of reality. How tough would it be to face reality with a quarter of a million dollars? The necklace is gone. Does that surprise you? No. It was too great a temptation. For you or Harley? For either of us, if we had known the combination to that safe. No, Mr. Dollar, it was the king himself who was tempted. Well, that doesn't figure. Not with his money. If he still has it. Why do you think he hasn't? What other answer could there be? Hmm. Might be interesting to try to find out. Oh, you would be wasting your time, Mr. Dollar. I've got some to spare. Perhaps I could find you some. I don't have any money. Oh, that was rather cruel. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Dollar, is that you? Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course it is, yes. Why the oh, excitement, Harley? Tell me, is it true that the necklace has been stolen? Looks like it. Why? I wonder if that could possibly account for it. For what? Mr. Rawlings. He's lying on the second floor landing. I think he's dead. Timothy B. Harley couldn't have been more right. King Rawlings was lying stone cold dead on the second floor landing. When Marty Fenton flew in three hours later, accompanied by a Captain Fuentes of the Havana police, I gave them a fast briefing. Marty's reaction was predictable. Nobody gets off this island until we learn what's happened to that necklace. Right, Captain Fuentes? Yes, I agree, Senor Fenton. Up to a certain point. What? Point, what do you mean? The good captain apparently feels there might be something more important about all this than a missing necklace. What could be more important than a quarter of a million in stolen jewels? How about murder? Never entered my mind. Naturally not. Eastern indemnity only insured Rawling Stones, not his life. Uh, I guess I had that coming. Senor Dollar is quite correct, however. The cause of Senor Rawling's death is not apparent at the moment. It will require an autopsy to determine. And if it's murder? We must then regard everyone who was present upon this island with suspicion. Uh, what help can you give us regarding that, Senor Dollar? Well, just what I've told you. Outside of the servants, only Harley, Miss Valdez, and I were among those present. And who was the last to see Senor Rawlings alive? So far as I know, I was. But Harley could have been with him after Rawlings left me in the study. For that matter, Miss Valdez could have seen him, too, before our little tete-a-tete -tete on the patio. Look. Fellows, me lads, I don't want to appear single-minded about this little affair, but we don't know whether Rawlings was murdered or not. However, we do know Eastern indemnities out of cool 250 Gs if that necklace doesn't turn up. Uh, payable, of course, to Senor Rawlings' estate. Sure, but who cares who it's payable to? What I'm interested in is not paying it. Thinking of possible motives, Captain? Uh, the heir to Senor Rawlings' fortune might well be suspect. So would whoever stole the necklace, if Rawlings had tumbled to him. And there's always plain hate, isn't there? You have something specific in mind, Senor Dollar? Mm, just a suggestion, Captain. 
Fuentes had his plane fly Rawlings' body back to Havana for posting while he conducted a very thorough, if unenlightening, questioning of those present. Apparently, no one had seen Rawlings after he left me in the study, had any idea how he died or what had happened to that necklace. Fuentes knocked off around midnight, and everyone ostensibly went to bed. I still had a few unanswered questions kicking around, so I went up to Harley's room to try them out. Why, yes, Mr. Dollar, Mr. Rawlings had a will, but as I told Captain Fuentes, it's locked in the safe. And it'll take a court order and some professional safe crackers to get at it, I know. But what about the copy? Copy? It's customary for the attorney who drew it up to retain a copy. Oh, yes, of course, I hadn't thought. Uh, Senor Chavez must have one in Havana. He's an attorney there? Yes, as a matter of fact, he handled most of Mr. Rawlings' financial affairs... He must have a copy. Oh, why don't you ask him? Oh, I will. But uh, first, I'd like to know why you were planning to leave Los Banos. Leave Los Well, how did you know? Well, maybe you can think of another reason for having a half-filled suitcase laying there on your bed. Oh, that... oh yes, of course. Yes. I was planning to leave. Uh, no reason why I shouldn't. After all, my employment here has been terminated. Have you discussed the idea with Captain Fuentes? Well, uh, no, but why should he object? I'm not guilty of anything. Just a thought, Harley. Mind if I take a look at that suitcase? No, no, don't. Don't touch that. I don't. Well, what do you know? A brown paper parcel neatly wrapped and tied. You mind telling me what's in it? It's none of your business. Put that down. It wouldn't be a necklace by any chance, would it? Put it down, Dollar. Oh, sure, right away. Well... Now, that's interesting. All new, crisp, in hundred-dollar denominations. Hmm. Must be close to ten thousand dollars here. Well, what of it? It's mine. Oh, I don't doubt that. I'm just wondering where you got it. I saved it. Working for Rawlings? Yes, why not? I saved it working for Rawlings. It's mine. Okay, Harley. I don't want it. Don't you really know why Captain Fuentes might object to your leaving now? No. I most certainly don't. Hmm. Remarkable. There wasn't anything I could do before morning rolled around except smoke a last cigarette and try to think things out. So I went out in the same patio where Anita and I had had our talk and lit up. The one cigarette turned into two. Then I started to light a third one. That was a mistake. I saw the muzzle flash. It came from somewhere inside a clump of palm trees. But with a full moon behind me, I wasn't going to get heroic about it. I made a dive for a concrete retaining wall. I didn't think the shots I'd snapped out had done any good, and I had no intention of finding out. Not with that moon lighting things up. So I made myself comfortable with my back to the wall and waited for the Cuban Marines in the person of Captain Fuentes to come charging to the rescue. Some 15 minutes later, Marty, the captain, and I held a council of war on our way down to the landing docks. I found these two empty shells under one of the palm trees, Senor Dollar. But that was all. No trace of the person who fired them. What about Harley? He's not in his room. So far, I've been unable to locate him. Now, hardly seems reasonable, Johnny. What could be so important about that money you saw to make him want to kill you? I don't know that he did, Marty. But I'd like to ask him a couple of questions about it. But why come down here to the boathouse, senor? Well, with your plane gone, there's only one way off this island. Rawlings speedboats. We'd better make sure they're locked up tight. One of the slips is empty. It wasn't when I got here. We heard no motor, senor. Well, that's nothing that a paddle and a pair of willing arms can't explain. Harley? That's my guess. And it's ten to one he has the necklace with him. Expense account item two, $5.65. Breakfast for two in Havana, where Martin Fenton and I found the Bougainvillea and the tourist rates in full bloom. We wanted to talk to Senor Chavez, Rawlings' lawyer. And after a rough trip on one of the speedboats and that rougher breakfast tab, we made our way to his office. 
Sí, I have a copy of Senor Rowling's will, but you understand I cannot disclose its contents until the court so order. Well, we don't want any details, Senor Chavez. Huh? But I understood you were inquiring about beneficiaries. All we want to know is if he left anything to a Timothy Harley or Anita Valdez. I see. Well, we've explained the circumstances, Senor Chavez. It can't violate any professional ethics to give us a yes or no to those two names. No, uh, no, I do not believe it is unethical to tell you this much. No individuals were named in the will. Only charitable and public welfare institutions. Well, that eliminates the heir apparent angle, Jenny. Mm. One more thing, Senor Chavez. There have been rumors that Rawlings' fortune was almost gone. Any truth to them? Not a bit. All his investments were most judiciously placed. He was perhaps wealthier at the time of his death than at any time during his life. Well, you've been a big help. Thanks. For now, it is an attorney's duty to obey the law, is it not? Any time you are here in Havana, please to stop in. It would be my pleasure. I will do, Senor Chavez, and thanks again. Well, that was a great help. I cleaned up some loose ends. It's a loose necklace I'm worried about, Johnny. Where do we go from here? Well, we can check out the local police, see if they've picked up anything on Harley. Good as anything, I guess. Oh, which way? We passed it on the way up here. We'll Let's go right... Send your dollar. It is most fortunate that you're still here. There is a phone call for you in my office from the island of Los Baños. Oh, thanks, Senor Chavez. Uh, there, on my desk, Senor. Johnny Dollar. This is Captain Puente, Senor Dollar. I have some information for you. Oh? What is it, Captain? First of all, the autopsy report on Senor Rawlings has come in. Natural death? Huh? See, si, that is correct. From an old, aggravated heart condition. But how did you know? No real reason for anybody to murder him. What else? We have found Senor Harley's body at the north end of the island. Apparently, his motor stopped and the surf dashed him against the rocks. His skull was fractured. You didn't find the necklace on him? No, but he's the one who stole it. What makes you think so? In his wallet, we found a slip of paper, senor. On it was written, the combination of the safe. Expense account item three, $35. Transportation of speedboat back to Los Bernas. With Captain Fuente's report, there was no need to report directly to the island, and Marty was anxious to get back to the office and bring you up to date. So he chartered a plane, and we took off for Miami. Well, Johnny, my lad, we chalk up another happy collaboration, huh? Yeah, you might call it that, Marty. A king there was. You know, somehow I don't think Rawlings was a very happy man with all his dough. Hold up on that island, nothing but hate around him. Well, money's not the answer to everything. No, but as the saying goes, it sure helps. But then I guess it didn't help Harley much either. And I wonder if we'll ever find that necklace. It'll turn up. You're pretty optimistic, aren't you? No, I'm sure of it. Well, come on, Johnny, give. Where do you think it is? Right there in your briefcase. It's not a very funny gag, Johnny. No, Marty. It's not. And how about changing the snapper? I wish I could, Marty. But it figured all along. Hmm. Looking for every possible loophole, I guess. But they all closed up on me. Where did I slip? Where they all slip. At the very beginning. When you first thought of it. What tipped you? Rawlings swore that only he knew the combination of that safe. He was wrong. One other man knew it. The one who supervised its installation. <laughs> I should have known you'd tumble to that. The paste pinned it down even closer, Marty. The reproduction was too good. No wonder. You had every descriptive detail in your copy of the policy. Weights, dimensions, photographs, everything. I didn't go back to the island, Johnny. How could I make the switch? That's where Harley came in. You slipped him the combination and he made the switch. That's why the 10,000 payoff and why you had to kill him and frame it as an accident. Maybe I should have killed you, too, when I had the chance on the patio. 
You've still got your gun. Nah. What's the use? It was wrong all the way. Besides, I never could outshoot you. Expense account item four. $32.15. Hotel bill and incidentals in Miami. Item five, $141.10. Plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $348.60. Remarks. With all due deference to my chosen profession, sometimes this is a lousy business. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Milton Charles. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Moyles, Lillian Bayef, Tom Tully, Howard McNear, Nestor Piva, and Don Diamond. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) 